Hello, in this video I'm going to talk about the Robinson annulation. The Robinson annulation is a reaction of a dicarbonyl compound, uh, and often it's cyclic, but it doesn't have to be, and a certain type of alpha beta unsaturated ketone, and there needs to be some alpha hydrogens on the other side of this ketone. Uh, and it's called the annulation, it's called an annulation because I need H heating this thing and we're losing a molecule of water uh, because when all said and done, a new ring is formed uh, on the compound. So the product ends up looking like this. Uh, and so one of the cool things about the Robinson annulation is it takes a, takes a couple of simple looking molecules and uh, combines them together. Now it turns out that there this is a two-step process. The first step is a Michael addition. And I'm going to go ahead and draw out you know, these things and some mechanisms as well. The first step is a Michael addition. Uh, the, right? And if you're trying to figure out how you might have determined that, you have this... Uh, 1,3-dicarbonyl compound, which you know is more acidic than anything else in the reaction, pKa around 10 to 11. And we have a strong base like sodium hydroxide. Our base needs a, a formal charge. It can take that proton. And so this gets, con this 1,3-dicarbonyl uh, compound gets converted into its enolate anion. So now you're and so now this thing is a nucleophile, and you're looking for something that can be an electrophile. We have this other carbonyl compound, and it's electrophilic at two places. But these one two dicarbonyl compounds are good Michael donors, so they will react primarily at the beta position. And you will form the enolate anion intermediate in, in, inter, you know, form the enolate anion first, and then the enolate anion will pick up a proton from water, and that will give us the, the neutral product. Okay. And then we have step two, not CO2, step two, which is an aldol condensation. In step two, the, the Michael adduct that first formed undergoes uh, uh, an aldol condensation, and this is where the cyclization part happens. So I'm just going to go up here and copy and paste some stuff. Right. So at the moment, the most acidic spot on this molecule is still over here at the alpha beta uh, in between the carbonyl groups. But in order for the reaction to proceed, some amount of this methyl position out here needs to be deprotonated. And its pKa is around 19, so it's not outside the realm of, of a little bit of this conjugate base, this enolate anion existing in solution. And once it forms, Whoops. Once it forms, now we have a nucleophile present in a molecule that has electrophiles close by. So this reaction quickly, uh, this, this molecule quickly undergoes an internal intramolecular aldol condensation. My, my arrows here. So it's clear what's going on. Yeah, 
Oh, XM. I have I have my uh, I have my ketone present in the wrong spot. I apologize. I'm too far with it here. Hope you you forgive me. And I'm gonna go back up here. I'm gonna fix it at the top of the screen too. Ketone present in the wrong spot. Okay. Um, and we still have the anion, right? So here we have this nice alkoxide anion intermediate. It's going to pick up a proton from water. Uh, we have water present. Presumably something is present that, that it, we can get a proton from. And end up with the, the alcohol. And then... And then as we know, this alcohol can undergo an elimination reaction under these conditions. Um, and even though I have this product drawn, there's actually two, uh, two positions that are acidic enough to be deprotonated, uh, two uh, alpha spots to the, to the carbonyl. So there's another possible product here. Uh, and maybe you already saw it. Um, We'll just we'll just draw that one as well, right? So both this hydrogen and this hydrogen that I've drawn in are acidic enough to be deprotonated. And I'm not going to show the mechanism for this last uh, elimination step because I'm out of room. Um, you can go back and watch my video on the aldol condensation to see how this happens. Right? Most folks, in order to avoid the two possible products, will have additional substituents in places. Uh, so, for example, if there's another alkyl group here, or another alkyl, or another al another alkyl group at this spot, um, or another alkyl group over here, uh, that would limit the choices for deprotonation in the in the final step. Okay. So, this concludes my video on the Robinson annulation. Thank you for watching.